Welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary. Now today we're in front of my 75 gallon new replanted aquarium where we changed out the substrate from an old soil master select that had been in the aquarium for well over a decade to a predominantly sand substrate that has a back corner with tropica humate substrate as well as some just natural aquarium gravel sprinkled over the surface for a more natural look. Now the time has come for me to clean the sand and I just thought I would take this opportunity to show you guys how I do it. Let's get started. Now as we look around this aquarium you can see how dirt settles on the surface of the sand which is really not the look we're going for but I'll show you in a second how easy it is to maintain this. Now in the vast majority of this aquarium, the sand is only maybe an inch to an inch and a half thick as I wasn't going to be planting a bunch of root feeders except for these cryptocurrines which are scattered along the base of each of the paths that we've created. Now as of now, which has been about two weeks since we set up this aquarium, there's no crypt melt but there's no real growth either so we'll be monitoring these to see if they need additional supplementation with the roots with the use of root tabs um, but for now they're looking just fine and maintaining sand or sand in general has a reputation to have a few issues one of the most widespread ones that i hear is that anaerobic pockets will form now i can tell you guys in my uh, the past 15 years of fish keeping I've never had this occur but at the same time rather safe than sorry so what anaerobic pockets are is when there's a deep sand bed that doesn't get disrupted harmful gases can build up in the substrate and then when disrupted could potentially harm your fish the easiest way to deal with this is to just disrupt the substrate as you're cleaning it you can do this with a chopstick you can do this with a pair of tweezers you can do this with your siphon end um, you just want to get into any areas where the sand is particularly thick. So for my applications with this aquarium, I'm gonna use just a basic aquarium siphon to start, hover over the sand and the rocks and the wood, clean up any debris. Now I have given this aquarium a bit of time before I vacuumed the substrate and that's because I wanted the roots of the plants to be established before I disrupted them. But again, I'll just hover anywhere I see debris right over the surface of the sand. And it's really that simple. Now you can also put your siphon into the surface of the sand like this which can really give it a fresher appearance. Um, also, sometimes people who are utilizing sand substrates will keep spare sand around so that they can sprinkle clean sand on top of the old sand should it be getting um, any sort of discoloration from being in the aquarium. Now, pool filter sand, you can, you can vacuum without too much issue, but as you see here, it can get sucked into your siphon tube. And all you have to do is pinch off the tube and the sand will fall out, allowing you to then continue siphoning without removing the sand. Now, because I utilize driftwood in this aquarium, driftwood does often leave a bit of a mess, so it is going to be important for me to keep up with vacuuming this substrate especially if I wanted to keep this nice, clean, clear look. I'll also take this opportunity to hover my siphon over the surface of these large Anubias leaves. Since I'm just utilizing sponge filtration in here without any real directional filtration, it's important that I make sure I'm removing any of the debris accumulated on the surface of the leaves as well. as well as on the surface of the driftwood. Often at this time as well, I'll take my siphon and literally siphon my sponge filter and this helps me extend some time in between cleanings and having to remove it to do so. 
Now you can see very little has been suspended into the water column here. Just to demonstrate, I'm going to take these pinchers, just disrupt the sand in the areas that I didn't vacuum near the base of the driftwood. And again, this in theory would prevent anaerobic gas pockets. Um, I'll also redistribute some of my sand, making sure there's not any sort of line at the front. And just try and get things back to looking the way I want them to. Now I'm just waving these pincers over the surface of the rocks to get the sand that settled from me vacuuming off of them. It's really pretty easy. And I'm pretty stoked at how this aquarium's coming along. I think it's looking really nice. But as always, I'd like to hear from you guys. What do you think? Um, I do have some fish in quarantine to add to this aquarium that I'm pretty excited about. Now I simply refill the aquarium with water that is close to the same temperature which I set at my sink. Now because I have a well, I don't need to utilize any dechlorinators. However, if you were to be using the municipal water supply, you would want to dose the aquarium for the total volume with your water conditioner before starting your refill. You can see how great the fish look. In fact, these rainbow emperors have been spawning like mad and I wouldn't be surprised if I started seeing fry in this aquarium. We'll see what happens after this water change. Now after I was done filling the aquarium, as always, I took a net and removed any floating debris from the surface and wiped down my glass. This whole process took me about five minutes and I just really am enjoying the results in this aquarium. There's a lot of activity here. I can't wait to add in my secret fish for you guys to enjoy. But more importantly, for me to enjoy. So I decided instead of waiting a full month of quarantine on these little panda Coriodorus that I got from a really nice gentleman named Michael out near Philadelphia, um, because these fish are tank raised, he reared them, um, they are exceptionally healthy, I decided to take a gamble and just add them to this aquarium because I'm so excited to see some bottom dwellers in there. Now normally I would quarantine for a month of health no matter the source. But because there's so few fish in this aquarium, I'm sort of willing to take the risk. If anything should um, arise health-wise, then I'm willing to medicate this entire aquarium. But it really is recommended that you quarantine thoroughly before adding to a display tank, especially if it's fully stocked. Um, some medications can be harmful to plants. Medications are inherently super harmful on the fish themselves and my policy has always been rather safe than sorry but apparently i'm throwing that out the window today i've gathered together 15 of the panda quarries um they are a breeding group and i'll show you the females are really fat and bigger than the males there's some juveniles there's even a teeny tiny baby in there and they're just so incredibly healthy that i i just have to get them in this aquarium so that we can enjoy them um, because all of my aquariums in the fish room are kept at basically the same parameters unless I'm using um, a substrate that alters the chemistry, I'm simply going to pour these guys into this aquarium and then we'll let them settle in. I'll feed them and we'll take a look at their wiggly cuteness. Now it's only been a couple minutes but I'm going to drop some frozen cyclops in here just to see how they react. Also to distract those emperor tetras, um, the rainbow emperors from investigating the quarries too much now I don't generally bother defrosting the food um, you certainly can it won't hurt I do defrost it if I'm worried about my portion control um, at which point I will defrost it and then be able to control the amount that's going into the aquarium but because I just added 15 Coriodorus and there's all these Pirulina and the emperors I'm not particularly concerned about overfeeding in this in this example um, Frozen Cyclops is one of my favorite frozen foods to use. The fish love it. It's nice and small for even the smallest of critters and it's very nutritionally complete. And as you can see, the fish really like it too. I would imagine any moment we will start to see Coriodorus come to my yard. 
Now, one of the benefits of adding Coriodorus to an aquarium with sand is they will absolutely disrupt that sand bed by digging their faces in as part of their natural feeding behavior. So they're really great for keeping the substrate turned and really just keeping things nice and tidy. That being said, it's especially important to make sure that you're target feeding them as especially with the, um, the Emperor Tetras in this aquarium, they're pretty hungry critters. So I'm gonna need to make sure that I not only feed the surface dwellers, but make sure that adequate food sources are getting down to the substrate for all the quarries in this aquarium. Now the hope is that they'll start spawning in here as they are a proven breeding group. And I'm really excited to share that with you guys. So make sure you're subscribed with that notification bell on so you don't miss any of the updates on this aquarium as well as all my other projects. Now I do have quite a few things planned in the upcoming weeks that I'm pretty excited about. A few field trips, visiting some other fish rooms, continuing my work down here, starting to break down the 150, as well as updates on my garden, greenhouse, tubs, and all the fry that I'm getting outside. Um, I am having an absolute blast both down here in the fish room and outside, and I hope you guys will continue to watch and share my adventures with me.